Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck, preparing for the upcoming rotation. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today's deck is built around Volo Guide to Monsters, the 4 mana 3 2 legendary human wizard from Forgotten Realms. Says whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, copy that spell, and a copy of a creature spell becomes a token. So we've got a very interesting deck concept for today's deck, which is Volo's Ark, and much like Noah's Ark, we've got two of each creature type, that way we have relatively low odds of already having a creature with the same type in play or in our graveyard, so we get to make plenty of copies with Volo. So if we take a look at our deck stats here on the right hand side, we can see two of each creature type, except for four humans and four wizards, since Volo is a human wizard, and of course we also want to exclude any legendary creatures because those wouldn't be able to stay in play with Volo and the legendary rule. So let's take a look at the entire deck here. At one mana the only non-creature spell in the deck are the two copies of a Blizzard Brawl and we've got our snow mana base to power it up so our creature gets plus one plus one and indestructible until end of turn and then we get to find one of our creatures with the opponent's creature. We've got Neverwinter Dryad to help us ramp, can sacrifice it for two mana to search up a forest. Then at 2 mana we've got a Lotus Cobra to help us ramp, alongside Innkeeper, which makes a treasure and then gains life when creatures enter the battlefield, and then 2 copies of Tangled Florahedron, all these 2 mana accelerants, of course very useful for getting our Volo in play on turn 3, that way we get to start making copies as quickly as possible. Then we also have 2 copies of Overgrown Arch, which can gain life or eventually get sacrificed to get a lesson out of our sideboard. We've got 7 sideboard cards to learn from in best of 1, including Environmental Sciences to hit our land drop, teachings to draw cards if the opponent has fewer cards in hand, basic conjuration to find more creatures, containment breach to destroy artifacts or enchantments, introduction to prophecy for more card draw, annihilation as removal, and then finally mascot exhibition to make a few creature tokens. And then we also have two copies of a Needle Thorn Drake as a 1-1 flyer with Death Touch, so nice defensive creature. We also have two copies of Dream Strix, the Bird Illusion, that's a 3-2 flyer, and when it becomes a target of a spell we have to sacrifice it, and when it dies we get to learn, so we once again get access to those sideboard lessons. We've got two copies of Glass Pool Mimic, which will enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature we control, except it's a shapeshifter rogue in addition to its other types, but when we cast a Glass Pool Mimic it still counts as a shapeshifter rogue, and we don't have any other shapeshifters or rogues in the deck, so we will be able to copy it with Volo, even if we're gonna end up copying a creature that that's already in play. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Spirit of the Elder Guard, can search up one of our snow lands, and we also have two copies of Faceless Haven as a nice creature land we can search up with a spirit, and then its power is equal to the other snow permanence we control, so it gets powered up by our lands. And then of course our full place at a Volo, two copies of Quandrix Cultivator, which is a turtle druid, a 3-4, that when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for a basic forest or island card and put it onto the battlefield untapped, so a great way to ramp. Of course druid is a very valuable creature type and a lot of the ramp cards in standard are druids, so we do have to be pretty mindful about those creature types, but Cultivator is still powerful enough that he deserves a spot as our druid of choice. Then at 5 mana we've got two copies of Battle Mammoth as a 6-5 Elephant with Trample. Also has Fortel for 2 and double green so we can spend 2 mana exiling it early on and then cast it for 4 mana later. And then whenever a permanent we control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, we may draw a card. And then two copies of Mind Flayer, a 3-3 Horror, that when it enters the battlefield we gain control of target creature for as long as we control Mind Flayer. Then at 6 mana we've got two copies of Riddle Master Sphinx. Now this is one of those arena exclusive cards that's only legal in best of one, so if you want to transition this to best of three you'll have to replace the Sphinx with something else, but it's pretty easy to swap out creatures in this deck as long as you keep the different creature types going. Then we've got two copies of Crack Play Baloth, a 7 mana 6-6 six, six beast with Hexproof, Haste and it cannot be countered, can also kick it for 2 and a green, in which case it enters the battlefield with 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And then last but not least, two copies of Bookworm as an 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven worm with Trample, and when it enters the battlefield we gain 3 life and draw a card, and for 2 and a green we can also put the Bookworm from our graveyard into our library, third from the top. 
and then the mana base includes two copies of Faceful Haven, and then two of the Rhinewood Falls attempt Snow Land that makes both colors, and then we've got 10 Snow Covered Forests and 10 Snow Covered Islands. Of course, ideally, we would have one of each creature type instead of two, that way we're guaranteed to always make a copy with Volo, but the 2022 standard card pool just isn't deep enough for that to work, especially considering we can't play any legendaries in the deck either. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, our hand is missing green mana, but it's hard to mulligan a hand that has Volo in it, even though we have double Sphinx, which is a little awkward. I think I just gotta try it and then hope to draw a green source by turn two. At least we've got a turn three play lined up if all else fails. Is our opponent some sort of uh, party deck maybe with Mast Vandal? And there we see Realmwalker. Does count as a dragon, so pretty cool combo with the temple. If I can learn with the dream tricks, we can get environmental sciences, which gets my green source. Another Gladewalker. So don't have any good blocks. I could chump, which is probably worth it at this point. Just to get that green mana. And get sciences. Alright, we top deck the green source anyway. So yeah, we'll play Volo and then next turn hopefully we get to combo off. Emiria Captain. 5-5. Five, five. Can still block it with Needlethorn quite easily. Alrighty, so... I could go Sciences, get a Forests. And then play Innkeeper. And then play Drake. Alright, not bad. Next turn, Sphinx can bounce two creatures. Adventure off the top for free, that's a good one. Paragon off the top. And an Archpriest to give a creature flying. I'll happily trade for the Captain. Okay, Cultivator can help us ramp, so that seems maybe better than Sphinx right now. Play Arch. And then I can always sacrifice Arch to learn if I want to. Mast Vandal could destroy my treasure. Yeah, I guess in that case we'll learn. And then what we get? Conjuration, maybe? Teachings is not gonna work because the opponent's empty-handed. Opponent flies a Paragon. And sure, we'll trade. And next turn I can Sphinx bounce. The Adventure and the Realmwalker, maybe. Although I guess Adventure they can replay pretty easily, it's just that with Archpriest that's gonna hurt. Although then again Double Sphinx can also block it, so yeah, we've got some options here. But Sphinx times two seems good. 
So we'll bounce Realmwalker. And then... Trouble Bounce Adventure. Could even consider attacking. Get in with Cultivators. Can gain life with the uh, Arch. And a Sentinel. All right. Plenty of life gain to make sure we don't get outraced somehow. Okay, how about a hasty Bailoth? And then send in double Bailoth, double Sphinx. Maybe send in two cultivators, even though they have a good block on one of them. Couple chum blocks. Opponent falls to nine. Archpriest triggers. And I can take five. We'll gain one here with Arch. Take ten, I guess. Blizzard Brawl, pretty good too. So yeah, pretty sweet seeing a Volo combo off here, even though we had a bit of a sketchy start. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand is promising. We'll need a third land to play a turn three Volo, but it's hard to turn down any hands with Volo in it. Bookworm's gonna take a while to get to, but maybe with double Dryads for ramp, we can get there a little bit sooner. Opponent with a turn two monk class. Okay, we get to play our Volo. Although next turn they can bounce it with a monk class if they want. Loyal Warhounds. Okay, that's a nice one. Gets to grab a planes. And a Professor of Symbology for one mana thanks to the monk class. Might get an answer for Volo. Luckily we have a backup. And yep, there's a reduced to memory. So for now we'll play Dryads. And then by playing the land I could sag both. Although I could hang on to them as blockers too. We'll sacrifice one of them. And then pass it back. Opponent's gonna bounce Volo. And play Professor. And they can still cast a 1 mana Sciences too. Get a Forests. Okay, so... 
could play Volo before trying to double up on a Bookworm, or we can just play a Bookworm. Problem with playing Volo first is that opponent can answer it, so I'm going to be busy for a couple turns trying to get that 2 for 1. And if our opponent uses Reduce to Memory on Bookworm, it'll get exiled so the second Bookworm can still make a copy with Volo. Mon class level 3 to provide card advantage. And memory gets rid of the worm. Okay, so now it's time for Volo. Mon class finds a land. They can only cast spells with this, so lands are a no-go, but a planeswalker is pretty good. Makes a dog, 8-8. And we get to double worm here. Let's see, how much mana do I have? 8, so not gonna have enough for spirit plus bookworm. Okay, Blizzard Brawl can still be cast. And then I have to fight with my Bookworm to kill the dog. And probably no attacks for now. I guess we do have a backup Volo. So it could send everyone at their Planeswalker. And then next run go Volo plus Spirit. Bone finds Portable Hole. Luckily my token still has 8 converted mana costs, so they can't exile that one. Bone's gonna draw. Don't know if they're playing any sweepers. Those would be pretty effective here. Yep, there's a Doomscar, sadly. Opponent foretells. So can't quite take out their Planeswalker with my Faceless Haven. So I think that means going Volo plus something else. Which is probably Spirit. Or I could still hit their Planeswalker. Hmm. Feels like I would want a board presence. Can get an extra faceless haven and play it. Alright, so they might need another Doom Scar, which this exiled card could represent. It's gonna be a Clarion Spirit instead. And then behold, it's a multiverse for one mana. Wizard class exiled with the monk class for more card advantage. So double sphinx could clear a path. Opponent keeps both on top. Makes a dog. Good target for Sphinx. And a Skyclave for Volo. So we only get one Sphinx at the moment. Portable Hole doesn't work on the token as her opponent finds out. Okay, so if Sphinx bounces the dog. We can animate Faceless Haven and force a triple chump if they want to save their Planeswalker. Could almost be worth it to go face. 
But I think we gotta get rid of the Planeswalker first. Opponent does go for a triple chump. Now I could play Arch here second main thanks to the Haven, but I don't really feel like overextending into a sweeper. The fact that they triple chumped implies that they're gonna wipe the board, and then I'm gonna need Arch to get me more action cards. The entire multiverse is mine. Yep, there's a Doomscar, sadly. So it should be able to take out Mordekainen now with Double Haven. I guess Professor can jump. Volo gives me Double Arch. So, I could sacrifice one arch to get to draw three here, while the opponent has a bunch of cards in hand. Or I could animate Haven. I think I would rather draw three. Could have also waited for next turn to set this up to then have a double worm after we put it back. So there's a lot of options. Okay. Ah, oh, my fate. Mind flare can steal two creatures. That's nice. So what's the play here? Might want to wait on Mind Flare until we can actually set up a profitable attack. And then for now, Mammoth, Dream Strix. Could learn with Arch. What would I even get, I guess? Let's see, have we used Containment Breach yet? We have not. So that could answer the Monk class, for instance. Could also get an answer for the Planeswalker, although they might have a backup in hand by now. So a lot of options. Let's uh, gain a life and learn, see what we can get. Yeah, Annihilation for the Planeswalker maybe. And then I can still Play some creatures out. I'll be in my tower. Don't. And next turn attempt to steal two creatures with Mind Flare. Grandmaster of Flowers. Okay. Let your soul be a wellspring that nourishes the world. It's gonna search for Monk of the Open Hand. Evil never rests, so neither will we. Wizard class draws two. And a Skyclave can exile Volo, but we get to draw two from the Mammoths. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, next turn we would have a backup Volo, double Mind Flare. And yeah, things were looking pretty decent for us once we steal the opponent's largest creature. So the game was far from over, but I'll take it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play and we've got a promising hand. Missing blue mana at the moment for Volo. Think I'm gonna have faith and then 
play Florahedron turn two. All right now we can Innkeeper turn two. So a little bit punished for not playing the Florahedron tapped. Yeah, we'll still go for Innkeeper here and then any land off the top lets me play Volo. Going on black white with an adventure, so adventure deck. Alright, I'll uh, play this tapped, I guess. Could also play it as a creature and then double block the adventure. Although then I'm not guaranteed to play a Volo next turn if they kill Florahedron. Removal spell also punishes me. Ah, that worked out. Get to keep Florahedron. And Nadar will be able to complete the Tomb of Annihilation pretty quickly. Just gonna lose some life. Alright, time for Volo. And hope we get to untap with him. Could have also stolen the Nadar with a Mind Flare. But Mind Flare also the type of card that we want to make sure doesn't get answered by opposing removal. And who knows, maybe we get to steal two things. Down to 13 we go. And Barwin. Alright. Well, I think I'm down for a double Mind Flare here. And then what do we want to steal? So Barrowing gets back creatures. Hmm, maybe go for Atropal and Barrowin. Although Barrowin's not going to do a whole lot for me, whereas Nadar is more useful. I'll go with Nadar. And then pass a turn. Opponent's got the Arch Lich with a completed Tomb of Annihilation, so that's scary. Double Cultivator for now. And next turn we can play some big creatures out. No great attacks. Keep our 4 4 Death Touch on defense, I think. A Ruin Seeker into Gargoyle. Okay. Sphinx also would have been a nice answer for the Death Touch token, but has been playing defense nicely for now. But I'm going for the Dungeon of the Mad Mage next. Well, double Bookworm tempting. I could play Sphinx to bounce two creatures instead. Bouncing Gargoyle to retrigger seems bad. So it would be bouncing the Arch Lich and Ruin Seeker. I think I would rather get the worm going first. Mimic can copy the worm once again. And then I think the Atropol can get in there now. We've got enough blockers back. Those trade. Another Nodar. So they can double scry one. But yeah, I think we can pretty easily take over from here. Berwin gets back Archlich. Kill it with a worm. And how about we copy the worm once again? Let's see how much mana do we have? Eight, nine. Could even go Sphinx. Bounce two of their creatures, and then copy it with Glass Pool Mimic. Bounce two more, and we would have bounced the opponent's entire board and probably attack for lethal here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, well, ask for Volo and you shall receive. I guess we'll keep. Ideally we would have a better mix of creatures, but 
Volo is definitely the centerpiece of the deck, and the deck functions much better with Volo in play. The first couple copies might get answered, so it's good to have a backup. I'll hang on to the Needlethorn. Don't seem to be up against a particularly aggressive deck, so I can afford to play it slow, maybe get more value. Apprentice. Unclear if I should play Dream Tricks. I think I'm gonna be even greedier here and hang on to it. Let's report to Black Green. Magecrafty sacrifice deck. Let's see if Volo number one survives. Deadly dispute to sack Eye Twitch. Might get an answer for Volo here. Maybe a Necrotic Fumes, yep. Well, we'll see if we get to untap with Volo for a turn, or if they answer it right away. Skeletal Swarming, alright, we get a turn with Volo at least. The Strix can learn for an answer for Swarming too. So, step one, probably double Spirit of the Elder Guard, ensure my next couple land drops. Get an extra haven and an extra forest. And then can hit for three. I think I hang on to Florahedron as an extra creature. I expect Volo to get exiled, and then next turn I can go Volo into maybe Florahedron times two. Gonna be a Sedgemore Witch first. Deadly Dispute sinks a skeleton. Okay. So we get to untap with Vola still in play. I have access to six mana. I guess we go Drake plus Dreamstrix, start building up an Air Force. And then the Spirit attack probably gets chumped by the pests. Do need some good blockers for the skeletons as well, so I think I'll pass for now. Might end up Blocking a skeleton with a dream strix so we can learn an answer for the skeletal swarming. Hunt for specimens. Can learn once again, might get pest summoning. Yep. I imagine it's time for Necrotic Fumes now. No, nope, another Apprentice first, and then maybe cast another spell with the treasure. Yeah, I would like to learn a lesson here. With Double Apprentice and Witch, yeah, that's a lot of damage. Fall to one. So the Necrotic Fumes never got cast, and we're just gonna die to a life loss from Apprentice, sadly. Have a few ways to gain life in our deck, but... Don't think that's gonna save us at this point.
Blizzard Brawl a little bit late to the party. Opponent's got plenty of blockers. So yeah, we seem pretty dead here. I can kill one of the apprentices. If I target my Strix with my Blizzard Brawl, I guess I can uh, get a lesson to gain life, but don't see how that's gonna save me at this point. Since we both need to kill Apprentice and gain life. So I could Blizzard Brawl, Dream Strikes, just so we can sacrifice it and get a lesson. How about Teachings? And then Teachings is gonna draw me a whole bunch. Mind Flare almost would have done it here. I can play Mimic times two. And then I guess copy a whole bunch of Spirits of the Elder Guard. Yeah, Mind Flayer stealing the two apprentices would have been fun. GG's. And a Calling Ritual will end the game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. We've got Volov, got a bit of ramp, just missing green mana, but we've got to believe. There we go, turn one Dryad. If it doesn't get answered right away, we'll guarantee turn three Volo. Opponent mono white so far. All right, and then can double Cobra, double Mind Flare. Against the Mono Whites, a life gain deck should be pretty effective. Don't expect too much removal. Put on the green whites. Innkeeper shows up. Times two. I'm tempted to wait until they present another good target, and there we go, Moon Dancer. So now Mind Flare can steal Valkyrie and Moon Dancer. Yeah, that's not a bad turn four. But this one isn't bad either. Orator for more life gain. And a Hallowed Priest will grow pretty large. Alright, opponent's down to one card in hand. And we can ramp into a Bookworm, which will also synergize with the life gain synergies. So, Cobra. A green mana. And for now, I think I'll pass it back, maybe hit with a Valkyrie. Cosmos Elixir can draw the opponent extra cards. If the Dream Strix dies, we can learn for Containment Breach to answer it. I'll wait on the Baloth. Go double Bookworm now. Another Baloth, Mammoth, sure. And a Cultivator seems pretty strong too. And these can all attack. Opponent takes it, so now Elixir doesn't draw anymore. Teleportation Circle, alright, that's pretty cool. 
More life gain triggers coming up. And I'm just gonna go with Cultivator. Get a couple forests. Could still bail off. Sure. Can't quite play it kicked. Could wait until next turn to kick it, but wants to be aggressive. And then I can still foretell the mammoth. Attack with all except Volo. And uh, I think the rest is good to go. Maybe not the mind flares. Sure. Could have done some math to figure out if we had lethal if we sent in the Mind Flayers and Volo. Don't think that's quite going to be the case, but can maybe force some Chum Blocks. Alright, so I guess attacking with everyone would have been lethal here. Don't think it matters. As our opponent packs it in. Sweet. That was a satisfying game. Alright, so we got to see Volo's Arc deck in action. And yeah, whenever you get to untap with Volo, it's usually a good time. Although you do need to find the right matchups for Volo to survive. If you're up against any control strategy, you're typically in for a rough time, as Volo's unlikely to untap and provide a lot of value, and our deck is quite weak to sweeper effects in general. So definitely not a competitive deck, but a lot of fun once you get going, and a deck that can easily be upgraded as time goes on and more creatures are introduced. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.